Good evening. Call to order the February 6, 2017 meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board recorded by ACMI. Uh, first on our agenda this evening is a public hearing, EDR Special Permit Docket Number 3522 for property at 483 Summer Street. Uh, I ask the proponents to come forward and introduce yourself. Please say the public hearing is open. <coughs> Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, my name is Robert Nesty, and I do represent the petitioner. Cindy Capabasso is uh, uh, one of the principals in the LLC. That's her husband, Michael. This is Joe Renee. He's one of the designers. Arthur uh, Renee is also one of the designers. And Paul Finocchio is our surveyor. Uh, you may be familiar with the site. I am. I grew up in this town, and that site has always been uh, a very sorry situation. It was a gas station for many, many years. Uh, it uh, then turned into uh, a, a car repair garage for many years as well. <coughs> the master plan has given us an opportunity to do, uh, do something very productive for the site, not just for my client, okay, but also for the town as well. Uh, we're proposing to tear down the eyesore garage that is there now and we're proposing to construct the building which you see uh, in the rendering, which will consist of seven residential units, uh, six of which will be two, family, uh, two, uh, two bedrooms, uh, one of which will be affordable, and the other will be a single uh, uh, bedroom unit. We're going to have an office unit in the building as well. The office unit will be for the purpose of the LLC folks, okay? Uh, just for them, it's not gonna be rented out that kind of thing. We're also going to have, which will complement the uh, residential uh, uh, stores to the eastern side of the site, we're going to have four residential stores as well. Now, we're here because we need relief for uh, the use itself, we need relief for the mixed use, and we, uh, we need relief for design and environmental review. We, of course, have submitted the documents with respect to de uh, design environmental review. One of the issues we're going to, uh, th uh, that you'll need to discuss will be parking. We need 12 parking spaces for what we're talking about. And essentially, uh, we're, uh, we're asking uh, that the board reduce the parking requirement by 25% down to nine parking spaces. The one-bedroom units uh, will require 1.15 uh, spaces. Uh, the two bedrooms will require 1.5. Uh, the retail will uh, require, uh, well, none, actually. Uh, uh, by the way, in a mixed use, the first 3,000 square feet requires no parking. Uh, the office use will, will require uh, uh, 1.56 parking spaces. So that turns out to be 12 parking spaces. Again, we're asking to reduce the parking spaces down by three to nine. Uh, uh, shortly, Joe will explain to you where the parking will occur on the site. Uh, we're going to have uh, uh, parking in the rear, okay? He'll show you on the plans, okay? And we're going to have parking, uh, two, uh, seven parking spaces in the rear two parking spaces on the right-hand side, on the eastern, uh, easterly side of the property. Now, what we're also going to do, my client also owns the abutting property right next door. That's an apartment building as well. And there's an access area for that, par uh, for that building on the westerly side of the property. What we're going to do is we're going to utilize that, uh, that parking area, that driveway area, uh, for the purpose of our site as well. We'd come in on the right-hand side, the eastern side, we'd uh, park in the back, okay, and on the side, and we'd exit uh, through that, uh, that area that it'll be a combined driveway. We'll grant an easement from the abutting property to this property so that uh, it'll be a legal uh, type use, okay? S and, and I think the beauty of that is that we will be exiting away from the traffic light, okay, and not into the traffic light. Uh, so I think that's a, a, an important consideration with respect to uh, a safety. Now, one of the things we need to show you and demonstrate to you uh, is that uh, we can satisfy the requirements for getting the reduced parking. 
uh, and uh, essentially uh, I've uh, indicated in my submission uh, for reduced parking what we're going to do, okay? Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have a shower in the office unit, okay? Uh, we're going to uh, advertise apartments for rent without a parking spot. Some of the parking spaces will be offered to tenants for an additional fee. Some of the remaining spaces will be shared visitor parking. And by the way, you're going to have a situation where uh, the parking is uh, not going to be in conflict with the type of uses on the site. Uh, we'll have a retail use on the site, we'll have a residential use on the site, and an office use on the site. The retail use, uh, of course, will occur during the day. Uh, the office uh, uh, use will occur during the day as well. And the residential use uh, will occur more than likely in the evening with people leaving the site, uh, taking their cars with them uh, if they do in fact have cars. And we don't anticipate that everyone is going to have a car, by the way. One of the good uh, features about this site also is it's near a, an MBTA stop. So folks who live in the building can easily access the MBTA, uh, MBTA stop for the purpose of going where they're going. Uh, with respect to the, uh, uh, the parking again, we're going to charge for parking on the site. And we'll also provide covered bicycle parking. The covered bicycle parking will be in the basement, okay? As Joe called it, I haven't heard this expression in years, the cellar, okay? It'll be in the basement. And it will be in the storage units in the basement. It may not be shown on the plans at this point, but we're going to have uh, bicycle parking in the storage units on, uh, uh, yeah, in the basement. We also are open to having a bicycle parking outside the building in terms of bike racks, if that's something the board prefers. Okay? Uh, with respect to uh, the, uh, the, the parking spaces required, uh, and my submission indicates that we're prepared to install bicycle racks if, uh, if that's something the board wants us to do, okay? Uh, the, uh, let's see, okay, all right. Now, uh, with respect to the, uh, the requirements of the, uh, uh, as far as the design and environment or uh, review is concerned, I think we've outlined that pretty clearly in our submission, okay? The, uh, I'm going to have Joe explain to you uh, the details as far as the building itself is concerned so that you can see exactly how it's going to set up. Why don't you do that, Joe? Uh, by the way, before he does that, it's a 10,000 square foot lot, okay? <coughs> it is 100 feet of frontage on Summer Street. Uh, we comply with, uh, with zoning. We have met extensively with the building inspector, particularly with uh, with open space, okay? So we know we comply with zoning at this point. So that's not really not an issue before the board uh, uh, at this juncture, okay? Uh, the building height is going to be uh, uh, 40, uh, no, strike uh, 38 feet, okay? Zoning allows 40 feet uh, in this particular zone. It's a B2 zone. Uh, and the open space calculations are on the dimensional form which we have submitted. And again, it's been run by Mike Byrne, the building inspector, and he agrees. So we have a, a completely new building, three stories. It's going to be uh, wood framed with fire protection. The um, all of the uh, all of the utilities are going to be metered separately, and the uh, tenants will be responsible for for their uh, electricity and gas and all that. Um, the residential units are going to be um, heated using uh, direct fire hot water. Uh, and that will provide the domestic hot water as well as baseboard heat. The air conditioning will be uh, a ductless mini split system for the residences and for the office. And for the stores, is going to be a conventional air handler located in the basement. Um, there's going to be a concrete uh, walkway section in the front of the building that will come in from the, uh, from the sidewalk to come across to the front to access the stores. Existing. This is what's existing right now. This is this is a, a garage currently on the building. I can turn it for you. No, it's okay. Okay. There's a uh, garage currently on the building on the site, and it's paved. 
and that's going to be re uh, anything that's inside of it's going to be salvaged that can be salvaged and it's all going to be removed in its entirety the new building is going to be constructed on the site this is the shared driveway and there's seven spaces here and they'll come in park in the seven spaces there's two um, tandem parking spaces there there'll be an arbor here with with some bushes to block the view from the uh, street this is the open area right here this will be um, a paved section and this will be a grass section there'll be a dogwood tree here there'll be two benches here and there'll be a nice spot to sit and and for the res uh, people who rent the residences to enjoy. The, um, we're going to be eliminating 44 lineal feet of curb cut. There's currently two large curb cuts in front of the uh, property. And we're only going to be having this curb cut here to access this driveway. And this one already exists. So we'll be adding street parking uh, with this project. I'm sorry, I'll put this, I'll put this one. The, um, the project is going to use a, in the parking lot area, a uh, permeable pavement to handle the water on site. And it's a, it, it looks like asphalt, but it's, um, it's really aerated. It's awesome. And when it rains, the uh, water can go through it and then go into disperse into the ground over a period of time. Uh, so that it doesn't go out onto everyone else's property. It's a really nice product. <clears throat> this is a cellar plan. The um, <clears throat> this is the front of the building. These are the this is going to be the stairway that will be used by the residences access through the rear that they can. Um, have access to these storage bins. These are five by six to store their bicycles in and to store dead storage of coats or you know, whatever they, they would store in there. And that would be uh, locked with a padlock. There's going to be a button on the stairs with a, uh, that you push just like when you came in here. So when they bring in a bicycle up the stairs, they'll push that and the, the door will open up and they can go right out. So they're not going to be at the top of the stairs pushing the bicycle out. Each, this, there's going to be four stores, so each of the four stores is going to have its own stairway down to, store, to the basement with, where their mechanicals are. Excuse me. The old man always has to get involved. <laughs> Thank you. So the first floor, the retail area, um, is potentially four retail spaces um, that initially we won't put this petition in, we'll see how it, how it rents out because it could be rented as, as one larger unit and one larger unit and this is, that's their access down into the basement. This is the, um, the access for, the front access for the, um, the second and third floor residences in the office, and that's their rear entry into it. Um, there'll be an entry vestibule here, and um, there'll be a mat, one of those great mats that when you come in, you, uh, the, the uh, dirt and debris will go into that. Second floor, this will be um, the office for Campo Gasso property. This will be the office pot itself, a kitchen to go with the office, and a meeting room, the bathroom, and the shower area for the office. This, um, and these are the other, um, these are three units that are on the second floor, and 
each unit has, um, each of the two bedroom units has two bathrooms that there's a potential of a um, roommate rental. Um, lots of natural light. Each one has its own washer and dryer um, in the unit. Third floor is the same. It's a, um, a two bedroom, one bedroom, two bedroom, two bedroom. It's going to be a it's going to be a flat roof on the project. It's going to be a, uh, uh, a penthouse to access that to make it easier to service the. Um, the air conditioner of units up on the roof um, and to shovel it off and with the snow. Will you be able to see the air conditioning units from the snow? No, they're going to be set back far enough um, that they won't stick up high enough that you wouldn't be able to see it standing on the street. We, we kept them to the, the back part of the building. This is the side that you, uh, the driveway side. The, um, there's going to be a recess in the building for the um, gas meters. They'll be protected by bollards, and there'll be a, um, a lattice screen to cover over them. And the, the, uh, the top part of the lattice will extend out, the, the, the top board of the lattice will extend out, and that will slip over a clip so they can be easily removed to service the um, the uh, gas meters. to put the, um, the vent hoods for the bathrooms, the, the dryers, and the kitchens to the side and to the rear of the building, naturally, so that they aren't viewed from, so it's not in the front elevation. In the rear of the building, these will be the rear entries to the stores. That, the rear entrance to the stores. This will be the, the uh, door to go down to the uh, storage in the basement for the uh, residences. This will be the rear residence entrance. And they'll have a roof above it. The, um, it's going to have all the, all the um, rain, all the roof is going to be pitched to the back so that the rainwater drains to the back of the roof. It's going to go down carpet drain pipes into, into a, the water system in, in the rear of the building. Um, the front of the building, if the entire building is going to have, uh, it's going to be masonry. There'll be uh, these bricks with red mortar. The, uh, the coins that are going to be on all four corners of the building, as well as the cornice, the lintels, uh, the lintel, the sill, um, and then in the front storefront area, this will be the coin material. Uh, and it will all be precast with the look of uh, granite. And the brick is going to have a red mortar. Um, the, the roof above the front um, entry into the building is going to be uh, real copper, a real copper roof, and um, accented with a vinyl soffit and fascia. And that's the building. So we, we think that this is a good use for the site. Uh, what it does for the town is it creates more residential units, which I think we need in this town. It also creates an additional affordable housing unit, which I think that is a good thing for the town as well. 
uh, we feel that uh, uh, this is probably is the best use of, uh, of the site that, uh, we, that we could come up with uh, in terms of uh, what we'd like to do with it. So we're asking that the ARB vote favorably with respect to our proposal. <coughs> Just a few questions from the board. Let's, Jenny, unless you have anything to add. I think that we've, I'm, I'm Jenny Wright, I'm the Director of Planning and Community Development. Um, the staff has submitted a report to the board um, regarding this application and uh, found that many of the conditions, the requirements were met. Mm -hmm. We did have some lingering questions which we've um, listed in mostly the special conditions that could be a part of the um, decision. Should you make that decision at point in time, um, including the landscaping uh, materials, the final transportation demand management plan, um, <coughs> finalization of the affordable housing details um, would need to be met, as well as a review of the drainage plan by the town engineer, and then lastly, uh, returning to the board with any final plans and specifications. Okay. One of the things I did want to ask about was that transportation demand management plan because we haven't seen much more than what's in your submission, but I want you to talk about how you're going to handle things like charging for parking. Uh, will that be the lease? Will that be an extra fee on top of the rent? How do you plan to manage that? It would be extra. It would be beyond the rent. Okay. Absolutely. We haven't decided what the fee would be at this point, but uh, absolutely. And will that differ between residences and retail? No, we're not going to charge the retail, okay, for uh, the parking space. We're not going to charge the residential uh, unit. Okay. Yes. Will the retail, well, I'm thinking more like retail employees, will they have parking spaces or where will they park? How uh, will they manage that? We're that hoping that we're going to draw a lot of the retail employees locally, okay? And uh, in some cases, maybe they uh, don't need to drive to the site, okay? Mm -hmm. But if they do, in fact, have to drive to the site, we'll have to accommodate that. Okay. I think in, in part of any transportation management plan, what we would want to see is some sort of fleshed out options to manage the retail's need. Okay, for, for parking. Because obviously that's sure. <coughs> going to be a big concern in this neighborhood. Yep. Um, although, you did mention that there'll be some parking added back on the street. How many spaces do you anticipate from there? 44 uh, 44 lingual feet of of park, uh, 44 linear feet of curb cuts being eliminated. Can you how many parking spaces? Estimate how many parking spaces? Are there an additional two spaces? Two spaces. That's okay. Paul Finocchio, our surveyor. Yeah. Okay, good. And as far as the retail goes, what do you anticipate coming in there? What kind of marketing plan is in place? Um, it's to be determined. It's We've had some preliminary discussions about trying to get um, some banks or maybe we know that there's a UPS up the street but there's no FedEx in Arlington so something of that sort. I'd encourage you to not go for a bank but I can't. Don't go for a bank. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're open to whatever. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and accommodate the site. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah and local business. I mean virtually anything. Mm -hmm. We're completely open. Would it be restaurant capable? We haven't factored that in okay. at this point. I'm just thinking about complementary businesses in the neighborhood. That would be an open issue as well. Yeah. 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 Okay. Something we certainly would consider. Okay. Um, can you tell me about trash management? I know in your submission you said that trash is to be shared with 483. Summer, how does that work? Currently? There's, uh, there's, a, there's a dumpster on 489. dumpster um, on 489, so they'll be sharing this dumpster. We've actually found, um, the Camp of Astros have found that it's actually more important to have um, recycling. That's that's more of the demand than actually a, a dumpster. It's never, it it's always more recycling needed than, uh, than a dumpster. And a lot of businesses now tend to be using um, uh, reusable crating. So it comes in and then the, the crating gets sent back. Mm -hmm. So um, we're, we're planning on sharing the the uh, recycling and trash. So you're adding several units here. You're proposing to add several units here. You need to add space to that dumpster they, or add another dumpster to that area. They actually they actually have a um, a property on Summer Street right now. Mm -hmm. 
um, that that has this amount of units and the dumpster that we would in it, they both share a dumpster and recycling facility this size and the dumpster there is never full either it, it really is the, the recycling bin. how many units in the other building um, which, which building 49. 49. Yeah. it's 12. yeah okay. and how often is that trash picked up weekly is that yes we trash? Trash? Or it, it? it's a weekly pickup okay Um, well, so with the first issue here is the parking. Um, you see you have nine spots here. Mm -hmm. I thought in mixed use or in commercial spaces, tandem spaces do not count as two. It counts as one. Um, no, where are they? I didn't. Yeah, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Can we check into that? Because then your, your count. Yeah, changes. I think the the mixed use has a specific thing about tandem. It, it doesn't count as two. Where's the tandem? That's the town bylaw. The tandem's right here. On the right side of the building. Why is that tandem? Can't you pull out? No, no, we, no we, we, oh, you we, can't put, pull we put the open space here so you couldn't, so you can't go through. Okay, we originally had it so you could go through. But this is, this is open space, so this is. This it's is a question, okay? Order. No, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it affects the number of spots you're allowed, to, you're saying you have, and you're asking for relief on. Sure. You have to return. Good question. <laughs> no, we're going we're gonna to allow public, sorry, we're going to allow public comment after the board's had a chance. That's when you say it's a mission to Go ahead. In parking space you have right now, uh, do you have enough backup space, driveway? Because you have, the parking space is what, 18 feet or 20 feet? Eight, that's 18. So what's the um, what's the backup space? 24, 22? Because it doesn't look that way. Um, right here. Yeah. Um, so, because right now they look equal to me. I can check if we have between 20 to 22 feet from the parking space to the curb line. Okay. So you're saying there's adequate backups to turn on space yes. there. I just, those are the two issues I had sure. with parking, right. that there was enough room for turning around and the, the counters parking space there. You said there's, there's, there's going to be an easement for driveway access, right? On right. the, through 489. Yeah. Right. And there's also going to be an easement for um, trash um, class mm -hmm. so There's going to be two easements for that, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Okay, so that's parking aside and you're taking care of drainage through permeable pavement pavement and right now the parking lot sloped from the left to the right right now right based on the plan shown there right now okay no, no I'm asking yes yeah. okay so if there's heavy rain it would shed toward the green area away from the building but it would shed onto your own property not toward the driveway right right because I've done permeable before, and it's great for the first year or two. But then, you, you yes, it just fills up with the gook, and it's just no longer permeable anymore. But it's but but you're, but it's still shedding back onto your own property. Not yeah, yeah the way this is designed, is the, basically the way it flows now, it still sheds in this direction when we run down. If it could flow, so basically running towards the grassy area okay. on this side. There is a wall on the. Um, southern side of the property, which is actually higher than the locus itself. Okay. So there won't be any water shedding water to the property here or to the property in the rear. Okay. And there's a berm that runs across here, and there's also a big one here. On your, on your last year plan, you show a buffer zone, right? Right at the end of the parking lot there? The parking site is right yes, there? Yes, there's a five foot buffer strip. Yes. What's going to be there? Landscape. Grass. Yeah. Grass. So you're counting on, there's a fence there, that's a chain link fence? Or there's an existing <coughs> stockade fence here, okay. and then there are, on the abutting property on the condominium association, there's a um, row of arborvitaes that are existing there. Okay, that's not part of your project, that's just... That's off-site, that's already existing. Okay, so you're just having a green grassy zone. Green grass zone right to, to the existing fences. Okay. My other question is, when you situate the building on this little plinth right now, 
Um, is, is there a reason why it's sitting so high up off the site as opposed to dropping it down a little bit so that the retail is more engaging with the sidewalk so it's more uh, friendly? Well, right now, you, you have this buffer zone landscaping and then you got this big railing there, which I understand yeah. why. Well, it's basically because it's, it's elevation change. We're going downhill. Yes. So we have handicap accessibility coming in at street level on the left hand side of the building. So we're trying to maintain that grade coming in. But it looks like you can drop it down at least another foot. It, 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 it came out wrong on the um, on the perspective. It it does it when on the um, elevation it does come in with the, the elevation of the sidewalk. Okay, so you're saying it's flush to grade. I mean flush to grade. Yeah, that's that's, just that's wrong. Right. Oh, this is flush to grade. Okay. So you have accessibility coming up, and that's why there's an elevation change between the um, sidewalk and the building because of this slopes downhill. That's it. So you have a grade at the existing is at basically 100, mm -hmm. and then down here at the back we're down at 96. So it's a four foot elevation change on the site. Right. I just think you know there's an mm -hmm. opportunity of having the retail more engaging with the sidewalk, so it's not. It is, but it, it looks more residential, like a front porch where. This is my front porch where I sit and I, I watch people come by, you know? Right, like, it's just that you have an elevation change and if it was a flat you know, on a flat street, you'd, you'd be able to keep the building down with the, um, with the street itself. But since you're on a four foot elevation change, you know, within 100 feet, you would have to maintain accessibility for the handicap. It comes across that way. And then you guys mentioned that you may or may not have a bank here? No, that's just a... It's not Off something we really talked about yeah. or thought about, isn't it? Well, you have an ATM machine right behind that bush. Well, that was just there as like it was just preliminary. Right it, that that yeah. was a mistake in the submission. Obviously, there won't be an ATM. There's no way to drive up to it. Yeah, that I was, know that. But that was a mistake. I'm sorry. Okay, so there's no ATM. No. No. Okay. I just couldn't see how that was right. going to work. I know. It was probably from past drawings when okay. they were drawing around. That's fine. Ideas. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to give it a rest right now. I'm going to let that mm -hmm. Andy, uh, Go ahead, Andy. Um, so that, I thought that was a good point about the um, grade, but it sounds like you've leveled it at the top. Mm -hmm. Maybe, and I see you're tight, so, but I agree with Ken, it, it, as, as much as you can feel like it's a porch and not this little skinny thing that you're maneuvering when you're going into doorways and stuff, maybe, maybe the stairway gets wider so it's a little more inviting. I mean, it's wide now, which is nice, but... Maybe it's a little wider, so it just feels like you can get up there easier and you're not perched. Yeah, we have no problem with making the stairs wider. I think just, that I'm was something that we talked about before. So, yeah. Are you talking the stairway? Are you talking the, the ramp? You're talking you got, you got this about ramp itself is being wider. <coughs> That's, yeah, well, I don't think we you can I can't that, that I'll change I'm talking so. about the stairs being wider. Oh, so you're just taking the stairwell coming up. Wider so that it feels more open. <coughs> Well, one of the things we have to watch out when you have the stairwell is you can only go a seven inch rises on the stairs and you have an elevation change and you'll be building the stairs up to the street. Why right, but if I go, I understand, I understand you're saying if I take it wider this way. That way, yeah, yeah, yeah. The problem is I'll be going into the street by the time I widen this out. Can you go the other way? Can you go? I can, but then I'm sort of cutting back on landscaping, but we can look into that. It's just that that's yeah. where the jog is and the coming in on the building for the access in there. As if I was to widen it out to the to the north, to the left, I'll call it to the north side, okay. I would have less room between the, the ramp and the property line. So uh, office is 782 square feet. Is that gonna be written into the into the special permit because it would require more parking if it gets co converted to residential, right? Or right. less. It, it's going to be in the. It's, it's your office, decision, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Off, is office more than residential? Mm, it's different. One is based on bedrooms, and one is based yeah. on <coughs> So it would probably be a one bedroom, right? It's fairly small. Right. Yes. Um, if it was converted to a residential, how would it affect the parking? Uh, in terms of zoning. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the parking would not change uh, if it's a one bedroom, okay? And that would remain the same, okay? Uh, I 
I don't believe that the open space would change. I'd have to look at that. Why wouldn't the parking change? Because it's, 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 it's one. It's one and one, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's all. That's good. Yeah. Um, and and you're gonna, uh, as Jenny said, the drainage plan to be reviewed by the town engineer. That's all part of the absolutely. Plan. No soil condition issues. No, nope. 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 Yeah. I'll just answer just one thing quickly just to go back to Kim's question about tandem parking. That is not in the zoning, in the mixed use section of the zoning, but we can just investigate further. It's not something that we, uh, that was not something that we really Not something we considered at all, okay, with uh, either with Mike Byrne or with planning. Or as part of our right. discussion. We didn't think it was really applied. I would just ask my people no more yeah. and see how that applies. Okay, because I just yeah. Because if you had too much of it, you you wouldn't have two parking. It just it doesn't make sense. Yeah. You know. yeah. Okay. I think that the bicycle parking on the on grade is good too. I mean, you've got it sure. for the basement, and those storage units are nice for the units. Yeah. But people are visiting and so forth. It's just nice to have a convenient place to sit sure. around back. We can do that. Or yeah. visiting the retail shops, considering it's right. close to the bike path. Right, right. Yeah, that, same, that really same for the retail. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I uh, just got going with um, what Andrew was saying about the TDM and, and making sure that is completely fleshed out. I think it would be nice to have lockers if you have showers. I never knew how that worked, but I know in my building, you have to It could be one stuff. shower in the office. Yeah. Oh, you have a shower for One the shower in the office, yeah. Oh, so, so the shower is not for the people <coughs> commuting? No. no. Oh, so then what does it have to do with the transportation demand, or do I have that wrong? The, the shower is one of the considerations with respect to uh, reducing parking, the parking but requirement. That, that I believe. is for the employees. Yeah. For any yeah. a retail employee who rides their bike might want to clean up. The and then that's fine. So then they go fine. up to the office unit? It would have to be accessible. Sure. Yeah. We, we can make that happen. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, you got to make it happen so that it works if you convert it to a residential unit. Right. <laughs> we don't anticipate that we're going yeah, to convert there's it there's to no a residential unit. Except if it's one of those excuse yeah. me, excuse me. We don't anticipate we're going to do that. <laughs> we want the office here. That's why okay. we're applying for it. Okay. I think you should think through that because that's the whole point of that shower and locker. Yeah. Of course, we'd have to come back. If we decided we wanted to do that, we'd have to come back before the ARB. And Got it. But yeah. think about it because you may not have any recourse at that point yeah. to except to say, hey, this is what happened and live with it. Yeah. It would be good if you came back on that and also on other answers and comments. Um, yeah, we, we can speak up. We had a, uh, not, at, not at this time, but we had a, um, spot in the basement for, uh, for future hookup of a, um, of a shower, um, not at this time, but in the future you could hook, because we don't know what the rental is going to be, if you're going to need two or one, and this, it would be a waste to, to put multiple ones in if they're not necessary, but there, there would be future shower stalls here, so it would be private, you'd walk in, shut the door, and there would be a shower there. Okay. It, it wouldn't be installed until so that's it was actually point. necessary. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but that should be noted in the TDM plan that that exists. That, exists, that option exists. Because the, the TDMs, oh, the TDMs are critical to us. Sure. Because the TDMs are part of mixed use. Yeah. And if we're doing the mixed use, which we are wholly behind for the town, it really it's important to have re reality now. Uh, whether it's bicycle, it's the understanding of where employees are parking. Um, Incentives. Um, we had a pretty pretty good plan from this uh, an earlier um, um, EDI that we did for, uh, for the 
bicycle of the health club or whatever it was. They really yeah. thought about it. And one of the things they thought about, which I want to remind you of, is you got shared, you don't have sh shared parking, do you? In the other lot? No. You just have shared, it says shared parking uses, okay, the share, shared uses, all on the same site. Correct. You're using the same uh, driveway. The shared, the, the shared driveway right. is the only that aspect that's shared that in the district. That, do you own that other site? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so they're tied together. Yes. And it's probably a good thing in the long run that you'll tie those two. Well, it understands that uh, if this gets approved, okay, that the properties are tied together because of the easement. Yes, absolutely. Okay, and that's pretty critical for yep. our special permit to understand what the total, um, you know, a requirement would be. Therefore, if you made changes on the other lot, well, we can't. Well, we can't. You can't. You we can't. would have to apply for a special yeah, you're, permit. Yeah, you're locked in. Yeah. We're locked in. That's one of the first things I mentioned to the client early on. Absolutely. Yeah. That that other site does not have a special permit, so they'd have to come back, as the right. person said, and apply for a special permit. But can you just say what a TDM is? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Transportation, demand. It's the transportation, transportation demand management plan. It says what it does is it says from the, the applicant how they're going to manage the traffic flow if we reduce the required parking. It's, it's a big thing with, with mixed use and the idea that you're reducing the amount of parking that's required, which we, the town thinks is a, a good thing. So, but the transportation demand management plan is all the things that can make that work, such as not driving as many cars, taking public transportation, bicycle, incentives for people not to take their car, that kind of stuff. So it's very important to us. And uh, shared parking arrangements, I asked about it, but it's, it's not, it's locked in. But shared parking arrangements in other, in other uh, you know, permits that we get are really important. So you say, I will forever, I'll allow you to park here and take care of the overage demand. So I'm off the subject, but that's what a, a TDM is. And then um, Andrew talked about the existing trash recycling. So there's another thing that you're sharing. So you're really tied in. So Absolutely. that yep. this special permit is putting requirements on that other site. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Lighting is provided. Will you provide a lighting plan with the with the permit application, yes. Okay. Yeah. So I'd like to put that in the condition such that okay. you'll be reviewing that, and if it comes up. That's one of the final, one of the special. The last exhibit in the packet is. Oh, okay. Right. The actually, yeah. if if you, you, so like, handy. It's all provided at the end. Thank you. Um, as part of the plans and specifications, that would be provided back to the board. You are not complete. That you're not contemplating restaurant, but if you did in the future, how would you deal with the uh, venting, you know, the black iron restaurant? Uh, well, we're not exhausted. thinking about restaurants at this point. Okay, but if you did, because things happen, mm -hmm. what would you do? We'd have to come back. And where would you put it? The restaurant? No, the fume, the exhaust. The exhaust pipe that has to be up to the roof. And Haven't even thought way. about it because we have not thought about having a restaurant at the site. So I, I just want you to think about it a yeah. little bit because you, you want to yeah. keep your facade as clean yeah. as you can, and now you're building a brand new retail building. Yeah. Um, it'd be too bad not to plan. We ahead. can certainly we can certainly think about if that. There's a place to put it, or conjure up some sort of a, a vision as to where it might be. Yeah. 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 Because, you know, it, it, sure. it happens. Yeah. It could be a nice place for a restaurant. Yeah. Then you get all that parking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. Please, 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 yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, that, you don't have this parking. Right. Well, the whole thing would have to be. It's not going to happen. The block next door has two restaurants. So yeah, okay. All right. Can and I, then, go ahead. As part of this, um, Samil, can I ask that you contact? Uh, the gas company and let um, have some sort of memo or understanding that they will allow the meters to be recessed into a um, uh, alcove like you said uh, in the past 
gas companies are very hesitant to put uh, meters in a an alcove. Um, Even on the outside. Yes. Okay. Um, they're just worried about trapping fumes and so forth. Like that that could be potentially okay. Okay. Sometimes they may ask you to slope the roof or something like that, so it has a. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. but I rather make sure that you you're sure that the gas company will allow you to do that. Otherwise, I don't want to come back. And say, oh, we, the gas company won't allow us. To we put have to it, jam it outside. We have to sure. put it outside, and that just changes your whole character what you're presenting here. Okay. Sure. Andrew, I just have maybe some cosmetic things to talk about, and maybe I should save that to later and let the... Go ahead. Well, to give David a shot, yeah, and yeah. come back to that. <coughs> well, most of my questions have to do with transportation issues, so and uh, so forgive me if I jump around a little bit. Though I have a, a number of different topics. Um, so the, the tandem parking spots, I, I have a couple of concerns about that. Um, one, it, it appears uh, from the plan that uh, there's not enough space to access, to get in and out of the, the rear space when there's a vehicle parked in the front space, that they would have to be moved. moved. Yes. Um, so is it, how That gets you, rented, to, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. That gets rented usually to a couple or a family okay. that has two cars. We have tandem spots at different locations, and okay. we would never rent it to you know people where they'd have to knock on doors or have sets of keys of other persons. It's always a family member. Okay. So my larger concerns with the tandem parking are safety concerns, uh, because access in and out there is directly into the intersection. Um, there's a crosswalk right there, uh, and presumably you'd be backing out. Um, of those tandem spaces across the crosswalk, uh, across the sidewalk, and into the intersection. Is there, there is no, I thought there was no curb cut there. There's a curb cut, they're relocating it. Where is it? Across the garage, they're relocating it. Right here, we have a proposed curb cut here. There's an existing one oh, sorry. that runs here, and then and this is all open up this way. So we have a curb cut here, we place the curb here. <coughs> And with the location of, uh, of the existing uh, commercial building to the right here, the sight line uh, coming, coming from uh, the east is, is very difficult there um, for, for a car backing out. So I, I have some significant concerns with tandem parking at that location. Um, uh, <coughs> We already talked about uh, uh, the shower issue. I had also noticed it wasn't necessarily accessible to the retail employees, but I think you addressed that with the hookups that uh, you're going to have available in the basement for future use if, if that becomes necessary. So I don't think that's an issue. Um, so bike parking, I, I think you need to do some more thinking about. Um, I think it's okay to tell the residents that if they want to put bikes in their storage lockers, they can do that. But um, I think um, as part of your TDM plan, um, I'm not sure that that's sufficient because that's accessed up and down stairs. So people would be required to carry their bikes in and out of, of the bike parking. and. Uh, I, I can tell you that is not a preferred way of, of dealing with, with bike parking if you're intending for people to frequently use their bicycles. Um, so I would encourage you to think... Even with, a, um, even with an automatic opener? So it's as you it's not the opening stairs. the door, it's the carrying the bikes, and especially with the burgeoning, um, burgeoning uh, market for electric bikes, which can weigh 50 pounds. Um, uh, it's problematic, um, just carrying it up and down the stairs. Uh, so uh, I would encourage you to think about whether there is a way to provide either covered or indoor parking uh, at grade um, for the residents. That's that's also secure. So like a, I don't know if you've ever been to um, Alewife Station and seen the covered secure bike parking there. Um, that's that's a type of option you could use outdoors, but uh, if it, I don't know that there's any any flexibility in the way the floor plan currently exists uh, on the main 
level that's, that's more or less at grade to provide a secure room for the residents to park their bikes inside. But Joe, how many steps would, be, would they be carrying their bikes up? Probably 12 risers. It's, that's a lot. Yeah, I mean, all so of the other buildings we have with bikes storage, um, the tenants have to bring their bikes upstairs. Yeah, yeah. It's just what happens where they're located. Yeah. And, and I understand what you're saying with like an electric yeah. bike, but doesn't that become a vehicle then? Because no. Um, and I mean, just with, but uh, that's an extreme example. I, I mean, but if you're, if you're, if you're asking people of varying physical capabilities to carry their bikes up and down, it's, it's an issue. Mm -hmm. And you have an opportunity here because you are building a brand new building. Um, and I appreciate that in many older buildings, um, uh, to the extent people are allowed to bring their bikes inside, they often have to carry them up and down stairs, but um, that's not the preferred way of approaching this issue um, now. Um, so uh, I, I think you need to do some more thinking about how that will work for the residents. As far as, um, encur uh, as, as encouraging both retail, uh, well, retail customers residential visitors uh, and retail employees to bike you also need to think about bike parking for them now that for retail customers and residential visitors that bike parking doesn't necessarily have to be you know indoor or, or secure but it has to exist um, so that's that's we, something to think about we there. talked about securing the bicycles to the uh, to the bollards here to provide like nubs or something on the on the bollards to secure bikes to here and also it, there's an area past the um, entrances to these two stores mm -hmm. you guys hit show better on The, uh, <coughs> past the doorway here that you could put a rack and then drive the bicycle past past the door and have it there as well so here or here but uh, those are the two spots that we we've, we've discussed okay and I'm, I'm glad you're thinking about it um, all right. Um, now it was we did not. Uh, it was previously noted there is good access to the Minuteman here, so it is a location that people could conceivably uh, bike to and from relatively easily. I did note a couple of things. The access uh, there there are actually three viable access points uh, for this location to the Minuteman. Uh, there's uh, down Bow Street is one, and down Forest. Um, to um, Fraser Road uh, is is the other one. Both of those are approximately 1,400 feet away. The closest one is actually uh, Ryder Street, which is the driveway the to the rec center, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. which is only about a thousand feet. Um, however, the the pavement there is in really awful condition, um, so it's it's barely what I would call safe for, for bike access to the Minuteman. I don't know if the town has any plans to do anything about that. Um, uh, but uh, one, one concern I have, um, because I really, I really want to help you encourage people to ride, is that uh, Summer Street is not a particularly comfortable place um, to ride a bike. Um, there are no formal um, bike lanes or other bike facilities on Summer Street. Um, there are um, uh, marked um, um, marked um, bike lanes. shoulders. They're not. They're not bike lanes. Okay. Um, they're they're marked shoulders of varying widths that are not marked as bike lanes right now. Um, and again, uh, I don't know offhand what the town's plans are. Um, 
for any potential future improvements for cyclists on Summer Street, but that's something that it would be worth investigating because I think that uh, for all but advanced cyclists, I think it would be uncomfortable for most people to ride on Summer Street right now, and that's, that's a concern if bicycling is a significant part of your TDM plan. Um, uh, I did note, uh, you, as you mentioned, there, there is a bus stop directly across the street. Um, the 67 bus is the only one that, that <coughs> serves uh, that area all, that does give access to Arlington Center and to Alewife. Uh, I did note, though, that uh, even during peak travel periods, um, that only runs about every 30 minutes, and in the middle of the day, it's closer to an hour between buses. Um, so um, it's not not great, but it's good that it's there, and it, it can certainly um, be an important part of the TDM plan that, that it exists at all. Um, I would like to, to think about uh, specifically what incentives you might be able to provide to uh, both the retail employees and the residents um, to encourage them to, to use the bus, whether that's subsidizing T passes or, or, or something like that. Well they're not they're not paying for a parking spot. Well I thought you said they I thought you well, said if, that it if is they're, for if they're using the T and they don't have a car they're not they wouldn't have the need for a parking spot. Not necessarily because people could have a car and still choose to use the T or bike from oh, time I see to time. Too. Okay. Um, you know where we like to have we like people to have transportation options. Uh, so talking about the parking um, so I noted in the TDM plan it said shared, well it said two things, it said the residents would be charged for parking, which, which you mentioned, uh, but it also said that it would be shared parking between the different uses. And I just wanted to understand a little bit more about how you anticipate that to work, because well, if people are paying for the right to those parking you wouldn't, spaces. You wouldn't you wouldn't sell all the parking spaces. Some okay. of them would be needed to be maintained for visitors for the residences. Okay. And then, you know, they would only be, the visitors for the residences would only be able to park there for a certain period of time. Then they would have to have their car out of there so it would be available to share with the stores. So. <laughs> no, not a whole bunch. Yes. So if you. <laughs> address, address the board. Okay. Don't address the yeah. people. Yeah. So if you have, if you have parking spaces for if you have visitor parking spaces mm -hmm. um, and the sign says visitor parking for the residences between um, 6 p.m. and 8 a.m. and then they would have to leave the parking space and then it would be available for the store between the balance of the time. So how many parking spaces are you anticipating reserving for visitor use as opposed to reserved resident use? We'd have to see what the demand was, but uh, you know, a few would have to would have to go towards visitor and and shared use. I'm I'm just a little unsure. How does that play into meeting the minimum number of parking spaces? If some are reserved for residents and some are well, some we would always floating. keep the um, minimum requirement open and available for the residents. Just, mm -hmm. it's hard to say when the applications come in, when people, you know, apply. I'd probably say about 20% of the applicants I see do not have cars. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay. some people wouldn't be renting a space, some people would be. So, I, I, I actually went and looked at the site, um, and I, I noted uh, this afternoon um, that, uh, that uh, the neighboring building, uh, your other building, um, there was one car in the lot. All the other spots were empty. Are is there is are all of those spots in a reserve for residents in that building? Ironically, that's the only building we don't have des designated spaces. Mm -hmm. But the tenants seem to kind of pick a spot and use that spot. Yeah. Um, we have open spaces there that when if and when some of our residents have gas, they get approval from our office, we allow them to park there. Mm -hmm. um, but not every tenant in that building has cars. Are you at capacity in that lot right now? Mm-hmm, yeah. 
Add capacity. Add capacity. Add capacity. Oh no, I'm full. sorry. I thought I you said are you? Are you, you add capacity in the neighbor? No. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, I I also was taking a look at the on street parking situation, and and um, there is very limited on street parking there right now. There are um, some spaces in front of the existing retail. There's what looks like there were the remains of markings of a couple of spaces in front of this property. And then there's, uh, there's I think, three 15-minute parking spaces in front of your other building. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's good, good that you're going to be able to make another couple of spaces available. But uh, again, there's uh, unfortunately just not a lot of on-street parking. Um, and uh, and there, while it's not marked, Interestingly, it's not marked no parking uh, along that whole stretch of Summer Street. Um, the only way you can park is by parking, you know, partially overhanging the, the, marked, um, uh, the marked shoulder. So I, I can't imagine that that's actually legal parking. So, um, so there is unfortunately very limited on street parking and will continue to be very limited on street parking, uh, even with the addition of the two spaces. Um, I, I also did happen to see um, uh, that uh, you, there were uh, kind of right in the in the middle of the uh, of the uh, driveway that's between the two properties today. There were a number of trash and recycling bins just sitting there um, in, in uh, by the side of the driveway, about halfway towards the back. And I can also actually see on Google Satellite View that they're there. Um, so is that a common state of affairs, that, that the trash is, is just sitting out there in the driveway? That might be just for the snow season, because we've been pushing the snow into, um, I, I don't obviously do the snow plowing, but mm -hmm. our facilities manager has been using the back of 483 Summer Street, and he might have it open um, that way to, to get by. Of course, that's not going to continue in any event. It's going to disappear. Okay. Uh, because it, I, I mean, the fact that I, I'm, I'm just concerned that I saw it today and I see it on the Google satellite view that it might be. But we're here for a new project at this point. It couldn't, though, because of, of the shared driveway. It would be in the way. Absolutely. Okay. Good point. Yeah. All right. Um, I think that's it for me at the moment. Okay. I do want to get to public comment, but did, Andy, did you want to ask? Why, why don't you do that? No. Right. <coughs> I will open up for public comment. Please raise your hand. Please address the board, not the uh, applicant. I'll call on you. When I call on you, state your name and address. Uh, we'll go through quickly. But you will get a turn. Yes, sir. Can, can I go up to stand on the board, or is that just stand in, oh. stand in place? And, um, well, there's a couple of things that um, name and address. Please. Oh, I'm sorry, Chris Connery at uh, 21 Peter Tufts Road, which is the opposite side of the block from um, this property. Uh, and a couple of things, I actually had some printouts and some drawings, but I'm not sure if you want them or not, or if you. I'll take a look at them. Yeah, just. <coughs> <coughs> That's why I thought maybe easier to stand over here. I'm sorry, I didn't have one for each one of you. <laughs> if you um, but a couple of things they talked about. Um, first off, was um, the gentleman in blue, um, when he described the plan, was not what the, was on the drawings. Because he described a um, a one-way driveway on the eastern side that circled around and exited through the common driveway, mm -hmm. so that was completely different from what the plans that he was presenting. Because we don't want to go back there, or it doesn't matter. Yeah. Just continue. <laughs> okay. Um, so then um, the plan does have a tandem just parking, which gets into so his description was a little bit off from um, maybe, maybe it was an earlier plan or something. Um, Come on, so this is just a couple things things to talk about. The elevation what, uh, on the front view doesn't show the roof access nor the 12 air conditioners with the 
screen in around it, but it has a residence on the other side of the block, which is a sloping hill, it's lower morning side. We, that's the side we see, is the air conditioners and the uh, roof access. So that's something, you know, whether even the roof access, obviously they need it, but whether they can slope it towards the, uh, so it's not a big square, I'm not sure how you would call it, but you know, a slope roof in the back. Um, so the, I've been there for 18 years, and the area of the condos is known as the swamp. The reason being is the whole neighborhood drains towards those condos. I'm on the upside of the hill, so I don't get flooded, but I think if there are any condos owners in here, they know that all the, the rain is going to be a con um, concern for them, flow, uh, flowing into that condo so association. Talk about bike storage. Um, May I say uh, also the especially <coughs> houses along Summer Street. Yes, yeah, all those. They have um, but then the biggest concern is the parking. If they're trying to reduce the parking through uh, the bike and also the TDM and everything, but the reduce, reducing the parking increases the building size that they're able to build. And I have concerns that it's too big for the lot yeah. in regards to the um, parking requirements. A uh, couple of things is, so I, did, I wanted to look at this property in relationship to the environment. Although they have nice rendering, there are, they're, they're cutting down the tree between the buildings. But it's, even though it's shown in the, in the renderings, that tree's being removed. Um, so it's going to be a brick building right after a brick building with a driveway between them. Um, you talked about the shower show. Uh, but the parking online on the street, I've um, both my wife and I work from home, and the parking during the day is horrendous, um, two to three times during the day. This is an example of the parking around 12 o'clock on week every weekday, um, in front of the property and in front of the uh, the condo area. So what that does is it pushes parking into the neighborhood. Um, so if you look at the parking along the street, between Park Avenue and Overlook, there's only eight parking spots on Summer Street. Four of them in front of uh, the, um, this property, and um, four of them in front of the residence, for a little bit closer to the ice rink. Um, so one concern is the parking for retail, then we're in four retail stores, whether it's employee parking, office parking, we never really talked about office use of the uh, parking spots. We talk about residential in the, um, and uh, the um, retail, but what, what is the need for the office? I mean, I don't envision them, you know, biking to the office um, to work if, or using that as a shower to kind of meet the TDM uh, requirement for reduction in parking. Um, and then one of the things I placed on here was I actually put cars in the uh, spots of uh, where they would go. And there's actually a car on the street to show that these represent the same spot, same size spot. But if you look at the, the uh, parking lot for the, the next development over, it is almost a third bigger than what they're proposing. Um, and also, I took scale from their drawing to the parking, and I find the parking is about 15 feet from the back of the parking lot or parking space to the um, apron for the walkout for the rear doors. So, you know, that's something that you could, that's for you to decide, because I'm not parking there. But it's also something for retail and everything else uh, that has to be, you know, I think, um, met for the town. Because, obviously, we don't want it to turn into a um, Davis Square. Especially since this um, property is a business zone surrounded by residential zone. Okay. It's not a Broadway. It's not Mass Ave. This is five, st or... Right now, uh, three properties that are just business all by themselves in the residential area. Uh, and then one of the biggest concerns is the tandem parking. There is requirement for tandem parking, whether it's considered, they're going to consider it as a driveway, or because if it's <coughs> individual um, spots, they would need a 12-foot aisle to get out. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but they're talking about it's being one unit. So if you look at it as one unit, um, so that's one two-bedroom unit, think of it this way. That leaves five bedrooms, five two bedrooms, plus a one bedroom. Um, if you do out the calculation, that's still nine parking spots that we need for those other, other units without this, um, the two tandem spots. And now, growing up on 18 years on, or 
have been 18 years on the street plus kids. We're very concerned about the tandem parking backing up into the intersection because that is the crosswalk for uh, the water to uh, lower Morningside and also um, Park Circle. Or now, what's this? The, the water to tower that oh, Turkey Hill Turkey area. Yeah. That's where all the kids funnel down and cross over to go to Odyssey and the high school. And to go to the pizza place right there. Yeah. Because yeah. there's no other parking between, there's no crosswalk between Park Avenue and um, Overlook. But just because of National Ge uh, Geographics, there's there's no real cross streets. You know, the best way is to go down and cross mm -hmm. um, at this intersection. So I'm concerned about them parking up, back up into the crosswalk for, uh, for the pedestrian safety. And also, uh, I think somebody mentioned about the bike riding. Um, if you ever spend time there, and I've done with our kids, when they're learning to ride bikes, and they're just, until about they're 13, 14, you actually ride down the sidewalk on this side of the street because it's wide, so you have room, room to maneuver. You don't have the, across the other side. You have cell phone poles in the street, in the uh, sidewalk. Um, so that's where the kids ride those bikes just so they can be out of the traffic, so they can access um, the ice rink. Um, access than the um, minivan park bikeway. So that's something that, you know, it's also a concern uh, about this um, this plan. And then also, well, yeah, I'll talk, I'll talk about that. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. The Red Sox hat, sir. Hey, well, I'm Sean Dugan. I live at 461 Summer Street. Three doors down from him. You said you're going to use permeable dirt right there. That area is all ledge, okay? So whatever you put there, it's going to run down to the ledge, and it's going to run down in my backyard. If you ever gone by my house during a rainstorm, I get the fire hoses out, okay? So they have to connect it to the sewer or the main or the drain, street drain, okay? And it's pitch. It's going to run downhill. That's all it's going to do. Out of the corner of the driveway on the building before it, you can see a river coming out of there, okay? So something has to be done there. As long as the parking goes, you got a baseball field across the street. Come summertime, this game's going every, every single night, okay? I have those two parking spots in front of my house. You can't even get to them during the summer, you know? I got kids walking up and down the street. I think with that store there, it's going to be, it's a hazard to the children. I need the parking way out of way out of line. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I live right behind you. My name is Lisa Mullins. I live on Glenbrook um, Lane. The estate's a cul de sac there. And I can attest that out of my bedroom window, I can see the lake in your backyard. Yeah. Which is <laughs> unbelievable. Lake. Yeah. Um, so um, both the people who spoke before me expressed some of the concerns that I have. Um, so I won't go over them too much except to say that it feels a little bit aspirational that we're talking about using bicycles so often when in reality, given the weather and the congestion on Summer Street, as you mentioned, I think it would be great if we could do that. I'd like to find out about the shelters for bikes that you have intended because we're thinking the same thing. The reality is that the majority of people who come there are not going to be from the neighborhood, I would guess, if you're having retail there, and they're not going to be taking their bikes. Um, my concern is that you're going to have units of housing that don't have spot for any guests at any time, designated car spot <coughs> for guests, and you're going to have office spaces that have no office retail that has no room for uh, customers. I'm not sure um, what the logic is behind that, but it's not going to work in an area that is extremely congested that you're hoping will attract bicycle traffic with zero um, availability to easily get across the street for pedestrians, for kids who play ball, or for bicyclists. So I'm one of those people who I would really like to see something done with that property. I've lived there about 19 years in the area, so it'd be great to have something done. I think mixed use is great, affordable housing is great. I'm not sure how many people really don't have any car and have no use for a car space for us <coughs> to come but I would hope you'd really think about that and maybe make the project more suitable for the size that you have there. Because I think 
the way I look at this now, it abuts our property very close. I'm not sure there's room for even a fire truck to get behind you. Maybe there is, correct me if I'm wrong. But um, the way I see it right now, it's just one more example of we in Arlington trying to shoehorn a development in anywhere we can and sacrificing natural space, green space in part, and sacrificing safety. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, my name is Carol Gonzalez. I'm at 493 Summer Street, which is one building away from the proposed project to the left of the other um, apartment building that they own. And I have been running a preschool there for the past 27 mm -hmm. years. And my concern, initially I was kind of thinking about the uh, construction phase of this and how that you know, my concerns are around the safety and well-being of the, the 56 children that we have attending the school every day, um, ages two through five. So I was thinking about the, uh, the dust, the exhaust fumes, the noise. We have kids out in the playgrounds. We have two playgrounds. And from 8.30 until 12.30, pretty much continuously, we have a classroom of children outside um, in the morning. The I'm also concerned about the parking, obviously <coughs> up and up and down Summer Street, um, and I was the construction vehicles, construction vehicles. When that would when that would even be happening, um, I would be really worried about the impact on the drop off, the safe drop off and pickup of the children at our program. And now that I'm thinking about now hearing more about this project and the part, the limited parking, it concerns me that people people that are working there will be parking in front on Summer Street, taking up the spaces that are there. I know in front of our building we have three 15-minute um, parking spaces. And ours is really, it's the drop-off is, the big drop-off is at 8.30 in the morning. So from 8.20 until about 8.40, it's really busy with very young children being dropped off, 56 children every day. Um, and then there's a big pickup at 12.30. So again, but that even though it's busy for those period of time, is moving. It, it is, you know, they're going in and coming out. Um, so I'm, I'm concerned about the parking and the safety for the children in our care. Um, I am also a little bit concerned about the, during the construction phase, this area has also had some rodent control issues during construction phases, and that concerns me. So I would want something in place around that, and I don't know if that's part of what you put in place anyway. Um, but then also with the the trash and waste being combined between these two sites, I would really want it to be more than adequate to control all of that and to really um, not make that an issue for our, the neighborhood. I, I want to stop you and thank you for that construction okay. issue. Issues that happen during construction, dust control, things like that, are yeah. outside of our purview and outside okay. of what we're discussing here. So I'm, I'm glad that you've spoken up and brought those to our attention, but things like that okay. are, are dealt with through the building department and through the enforcement department. <coughs> but your other concerns are, are certainly heard. They're all your, your concerns are heard, and I appreciate it that okay. that's come up. And there yeah. are things that we can do as far as trash control and movement control as the project, as the project, were the project to be approved as it existed, there could be conditions put in place to control those. So thank okay. you. Yes, ma'am. Um, yes, Elaine Crowder to Glenbrook. Um, um, there are a few things that, that were mentioned that I uh, wanted to clarify. Um, I heard that the height of the building was to be 38 feet, that there was a 40-foot limit. Um, does that include the cap? That's to the, the top and of the corners, yeah. The top of the, the top of the right there. Top of this. Yep. And that's from So it the, does not include the cap. And that's from this side. No, nope, right to the top. Right. So so how high is the cap and how high is the fence that's around the compressor? The the um the penthouse, penthouse. according to the um throwing by rice doesn't think doesn't come into play with the uh, But how high building. is it? That's eight feet more. Eight feet. This so. is it's eight feet. Um, actually, it's going to, so 8 feet minus 16 inches, because it'll be at the roof level up 8 feet. So 7 foot 
and uh, something. Okay. Uh, and what kind of, um, of uh, my, the other question I had was, I'm, I know I'm supposed to be addressing the board, not them, but these oh, are my sorry. questions. <laughs> um, uh, the, the, other, the other question I had was uh, what kind of noise abatement um, there is in conjunction with these compressors, the 12 compressors on top of the, of the uh, house. I mean, of the of the construction of the project, as well as anything that would be going in in the future, having to do with restaurant venting. Mm -hmm. Anything to do with restaurant venting would be something that would have to come back in front of us. Okay. There would be a separate hearing on that. Okay. But the, the question about noise abatement for what's proposed, you, you can certainly answer. The um, these the uh, mini split systems, um, they're relatively quiet. Um, Oh, the, it's yeah, it's these ones where um, that's the that's the inside part, and then there's the outside part, there's yeah. um, there's the outside part, and the, the fans on those it they run a, they run like constantly, but it's so they have a, is <coughs> a level that could be that could be put to the before the board. We would have to 12? we would have to then yes when that when the time comes to pull the permit, it will be specified what um, which. Product that's being installed, and then we'll know the decibel level at that time. So but on a whole, so there's, are, so there's not any specific noise abatement that's planned for that structure around it. Correct. Okay. I would request that that be thought about because of the uh, we we already have had some residents that live on that side of our of our Glenbrook uh, condos that have had difficulties with the noise from the restaurant and the restaurant um, uh, fan so that that might be considered please um, the um, I wanted to to uh, ask about environmental hazard study I haven't I've heard no mention of that since this was a gas station we've had a 21e done otherwise we would not be doing this project okay what and what's a 21e I don't know 21E is an environmental study mm -hmm. where you do test borings and you uh, conclude that the site is suitable for construction okay. and you don't have contamination. Okay. Um, and the last thing uh, that I wanted to talk about was uh, uh, pest uh, control. We have, as the town knows, um, had considerable problems with, with pests in the area. Um, we have taken a lot of measures. Um, on our property and uh, with our with our residents to um, change the way that we use our dumpster and um, uh, we have had we, and we are aware that our property offers the burrowing sites and the home for anything that goes in that is taking up pavement um, so uh, and I am don't think from what my I mean, I would like to hear what the town tends uh, tends to require of projects that are going to have um, increased impact in that in, with a with dumpster and uh, whether there's going to be requirement that the dumpster be uh, uh, animal proof. It's not. It does, really does not allow access to to rats. Um, whether there would be um, uh, a requirement that before leasing happens, that there be um, uh, pest control contracts in place that includes both external and internal, that kind of thing. <coughs> the, um, the, the dumpster is going to be going on a pad, and there's going to be a fence around the, the dumpster. <laughs> OK. Fences, rats get through. That's something we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about, considering. <laughs> Yeah. Thank so, you. is there anything else? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, there's one. Actually, I had one other. Go ahead quickly, and then. Uh, yeah, it was just it was one other uh, comment about <coughs> about traffic patterns um, that I hadn't heard mentioned, and that is that I've had experiences at that um, intersection um, where uh, trying to go through that light uh, with, at the T intersection where someone had paused or parked or some, I think they were parked in front of the, um, of the existing uh, Soto restaurant area. And someone, 
I was trying to turn left, and a uh, someone who was trying to go straight had to go around this. It's, it's not an easy intersection. That's so. Sure. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chris Loretti, 56 Adams Street. I have a few questions and comments. Um, first, on the drainage, will any of the stormwater be leaving the site? It, it's, uh, it, it'll, yeah, it'll migrate the same as it does now because the pavement will go through the pavement into the soil and basically flow down through its hill because it's going to go into recharge. But will it be going to other people's yards or into the street or into the sewer? It's going to be designed to go into the ground, hit the groundwater, and disperse with the groundwater. It's a recharge system. Has the board received the stormwater plan? We have. It's part of the original packet. I know it's set for review by the town engineer. I don't believe he's weighed in on it yet. No, we have not had been. That's noted in the report, but that still means. You know, I, I would urge the board to hold off on any decision until you, you've received the result of the view of that. My understanding was that no stormwater is supposed to leave the site. Um, you know, for new developments, but you know, I'll leave that to you. Um, the question I had is, do you have a landscape plan? Landscape it, plan? It's on the, uh, it, it's on this plan, yeah. That's something that, that will need some work. We've seen some proposals for that as part of the initial application, but it's not. Which, which one are you referring to? Uh, the application for the special permit that was. No, but you said that would be, do you mean the landscape plan, or were you, were you on the drainage plan? The drainage plan is in there, Then there is a proposed landscape plan that in the entire packet. Can someone explain where the landscape areas are on that figure? Uh, basically, we have them all along the front area. Yeah. And up here along the side, this is a grass area. This is um, a paved patio area. And there would be a grass strip that runs along here. And then in front of the existing building along the side, the new plantings putting on that property. But that's not part of your development, right? It's not part of the development, but we are utilizing this driveway. So in conjunction with utilizing that, we'll be upgrading the landscaping on that property. But are you taking credit for the landscape no, area on that no, site to meet no. your landscaped open space requirement? No. You're not? No. And where is the usable open space? Over here. And how, what is the total area? <coughs> I don't have that shot in front of me. But, um, actually, it's uh, 1,420 square feet uh, required usable open space. And landscape area is 710 square feet. What's the total um, gross square footage of the building? Uh, building area is 7,100 square feet. That's for all the uses? The, the residential land? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what was the usable open space again? Uh, 1,420 square feet. Thank you. Um, I guess on the parking, um, while, we're at, while you're up there, um, what is the aisle width for those two um, spaces on the side? Is that where the 12 feet is? This is the two tenant parking spaces. Yeah, and then the aisle next to them is how wide? This is not really an aisle width, so it's not used for backing in and out. There's okay. some two parking spaces here. We will back out into the street. So you will back into the street. For these two spaces here, yes. I would ask the board to look at that. It's my understanding that you cannot, um, backing out into a street is not allowed for this type of use. It's allowed for one and two family homes, <coughs> but not, not for business uses and not for mixed use. Um, and uh, my understanding also is you do need an aisle next to parallel spaces, but you don't have enough room there, particularly if you can't pull through. And, and you, know, you have to you know, have uh, one way of getting out. The, up, the other issue is there's also limitations on how close you put a curb cut to an intersection. And I think you may have problems with that as well. So uh, I think the board really needs to think through the parking issue. I heard the owner say that they own the property next to next door. These are abutting sites or nearby sites, is that right? They're abutting sites. And that there's available parking there. Why isn't the board requiring them to provide spaces on that site for use for this development? It's that, that's entirely allowed in the zoning bylaw, is it not? It is. It's certainly something we can consider. Yeah, I really urge you to do that. Um, then just a couple other questions. Did I hear something about the possibility of converting some of the retail or office space to another residential unit? Or we have that? never suggested that. Okay, that came up from the board. That's yeah, not something we've thought about. the office on the right. second floor. Okay. <clears throat> Does, my understanding, though, is right now, 
um, based on the zoning bylaws, you cannot put any more residential units in than are being proposed. Is that the applicant's understanding under the existing bylaw? Yes. We Again, the office use is going to be an office use. We do not intend to convert it to residential use. But I, I want to sure the board understands that under the bylaw. I think the board does under understand that. Okay. You. They're maxed out. Yeah. Okay. Um, then the final thing, there was mention of the 21 East Site Assessment. What is the designation of this lot under the Massachusetts um, Contingency Plan? I don't think that's a matter for this particular board. Yeah, any environmental issues are... Well, it is because that. under the 21E program, depending on the designation, that restricts the uses. And, and for example, you might not be able to put in a daycare center if it has a particular designation. And I think that's entirely appropriate to the board. And I would urge you to make that public. Um, then the next question I would have is, is the board going to require the applicant to come back uh, and reopen the special permit when it's determined what non-residential uses may go in, other than the office. You know, for any particular retail or restaurant use, will any of those require the reopening of the permit? It depends what the use is. Depend on the use, but that would be that could be a condition. We'll consider. I would urge you to put that in because because under mixed use, my understanding is anything under mixed use, you know, requires them to come before the board and since. You know, understandably, they don't know exactly what's going to go in. At I this think time. the onus on that would be on the tenant, the commercial tenant renting, and that would be contingent on whether or not they wanted the space. If you had to go through the town, and get that's it. correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Other questions, comments? Twenty second follow up. Um, with regards to the parking for forty nine, I mean, according to town records, the the existing property, that's an eighteen bedroom apartment building. Um, so 18 bedrooms where according to the assessor's report it's a, it's a 12 unit 11 what? unit one bedroom one studio okay that's just the, the assessor's saying it's 18 that's why I just that's why I just wondered but then it gets into how many parking spots are required for that building because they are losing parking spots because of the dumpster uh, relocation mm -hmm. oh, that 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 property is not under what we're discussing here. That's well, no, but it's just in terms of it's something. Yeah, it's the dump, they're using, they're sharing the trash, but they're actually they're taking parking from the other park lot for the trash. Yeah. Because the, the trash has been in the, in the dumpster, has been in the driveway for. Yeah, I, I understand your question, but it's it's outside of what we'll consider for the the permit. Well, it's just it just comes into yeah. the trash. No, I understand. Yeah. You're you taking from here to pick the yeah. yeah. Other questions, concerns, comments, anything from the board? One more question. Yeah. You have the office space on the second floor, right? Uh, would that meet, since it's office space, would it need to meet handicap codes and have um, elevator access to that uh, second uh, floor? The building inspector said no. Because of right. the size? Right. It was below a certain size right. requirement? Yep. Okay. Ma'am, I saw your hand up. Kit Hayes from Glenbrook Lane. Uh, I just want to reinforce. I think the project is much too big for the site and for the neighborhood. And I really think, given all the issues, the smaller issues that have been brought up, I think it should be scaled back. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Margaret Petrella. I live at 23 Edmond Road, and I've been there for about 16 years. And I don't want to repeat all the points. I mean, everyone has raised my issues and concerns, but you know, specifically with re regard to pedestrian safety, the tandem parking, backing out into an intersection, um, it, it makes no sense to me. Um, and I am also very concerned about the size of the building for the neighborhood, the feel of the feel of the neighborhood. I don't know if you all have walked around that neighborhood, um, but this this building, as others have said, just feels far too large for the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Comments from the board in terms of our deliberation on this. Or just yeah, I, I think that um, there's some important questions about access and circulation. I didn't realize as you first presented it that that was meant to be a, the one on the right was meant to be an access out into the street and it's close to that intersection. I'm not really sure how you use it. I don't think backing out is is acceptable. Um, in 
in addition to the amount of parking that really is going on on the street um, and the uses that are being brought there that are going to increase that, I feel like there is another step you need to take to show us how that is going to work. I, one thought I have is that you really should look at this as two built as, as one project. Um, if there is a, the ability to look at a central entrance and a big parking lot that can work together with 12 units, you said, on the left side and seven on the right, is there a way you can design this thing with a central parking, a a central parking access, shared dumpsters, shared uh, parking zone that takes care of residential, visitor, and so forth? Um, that would be a better plan that would provide better circulation. I, I, again, I don't think that tandem situation works, and I am a little concerned that tandem, when, when you get down to that many parking spaces, it's quite reduced, that tandem is an issue. Um, we'll certainly so take a look at that. Yeah. I think then, then <coughs> the, the, the other issues I think could be, uh, Andrew, could be dealt with in terms of conditions, um, you know, screening, noise abatement, mm -hmm. um, the sewage, very, uh, not sewage, but <laughs> storm water. Sure. Mm -hmm. And that if we could take, uh, if we could take another look at this in a continuance, that we would be able to see what the actual um, drainage is on the site, plus address, have you address these, these yeah. circulation and sure. access issues. Yeah. Um, it does feel a little big when you start thinking about parking and what's happening on the site. <coughs> I had a lot of issues to talk about of just the design of it and the feel of it and so forth, but I think I'd really reserve that to the point where we really deal with the size of it, the access, and the parking. Um, you may or may not want to look at it as two sites, but that may be an opportunity for you. So that's my opinion. Well, you're about combining the sites because of the uh, the easement, uh, and, and you know, so okay. that's something that's already going to be in place, so we can think about I'm that. I'm combining it to give you possibly an opportunity to, to make an argument that the parking is going to be adequate and the circulation is going to be I, adequate. I understand your point. So that's why I'm... Yeah, yeah I, I don't have anything to add to... to well, I do, but I, I think that's well said. Uh, I think I'd like to see a, a more fleshed out transportation demand management plan. Uh, so obviously you can't bind any potential tenants, rent, re retail tenants, to that they'd have to come up with their own, but I'd at least like to see what sort of incentives you'll provide to, to get them in the door, to get residents in the door, how you'll manage your own office. Um, the landscape plan that was provided is it really needs to be fleshed out. I, I, we need to see what is going to be used, how that open space will be managed. Um, this more things along those lines. Uh, I think Andy tackled everything as far as parking goes, uh, but I would like to see uh, some more thought go into that, especially around those tandem spaces, and maybe those tandem spaces could be turned into additional <coughs> green space if you can begin to, to take from uh, the neighboring community. And Andrew, just, just to be clear, if, if that's not possible, I mean, you may not want to do it that way. Think about the size of this building. Can I add something yeah. to this? Yeah. You should talk to your architect about the size of it. You said this was a, a sprinkler building, right? Yes. Under the new codes, you, you only require to have one means of egress, vertical circulation, on a sprinkler building that's less than 75 feet of travel per floor from the furthest corner to the furthest corner. So by deleting one of those stairs, you may be able to shrink the building down. It might be a win-win. So, so look at I'm not like telling you what to do. I'm just a suggestion. Uh, Thanks, Ken. Um, we also could think about uh, uh, in the TDM plan um, uh, having provisions that you would insert into the leases with any retail tenants. We have done that before. We have actually. Um, That's true. And and so you you can while 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 the individual retail tenants. Uh, would need to deal with TDM on their own, uh, you can create a framework within which they would operate um, that, that meshes with your overall TDM plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd like to continue. 
this we'll move in motion and we'll just continue it. Just continue it. Um, Jenny, what does our upcoming schedule look like where we can accommodate them? We yeah, could move to continue the um, EDR special to, permit for docket number 3522 to February 27th. Okay. That would be. Can we to what date? Yeah. So what do you su what do you suggest? Mm -hmm. We can get right on it. Okay. What kind of time? Lindy, well, the question is if you are looking at the 27th, you just said. Yeah. Yes. February 27th. We don't want you to have to come back over and over again. So right. you don't think you'll be ready we don't want that <laughs> point. We don't want to do that. Oh, the one after oh, that. One after that. Okay, well that's a later portion of our discussion. Currently your next meeting after that is March 6th. We were talking about changing that meeting to March 13th, but that would be, we, you know, your so current we, next meeting mm -hmm. is March I think 6th. we go with the March date. Right? What about the 13th? Are you? The March 13th meeting would be our war warrant articles hearing, and yeah. we're going to have five articles to hear, public hearings. So March 6th. March 6th. March 6th. So March 6th. The next March 6th. there is no other. I won't be here. That's okay. That's okay. So March, March 6th. 6th. March 6th. Otherwise, it's later in March. March 6th. Is, March 6th is fine. That's okay. Like, I do. So, yeah. I motion to move this uh, hearing, um, docket number 3522, to uh, uh, March 6th. Continue. Continue. Yeah. Is there yeah. any chance we could um, talk about it for the 27th and then maybe just because we won't be local then? Is the 27th how, what's the, what is that, two weeks or is it just a week? No, it's two weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. And no, 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 not for today. The the continue the hearing because <coughs> you're still in the public hearing. Yeah. And I need to go Do you think that's okay or not? So what are we talking about doing now? I need to know. The uh, well, you guys said the sixth. I'm, I'm already looking at it. It the yeah. time frame that you need to get the plans back into yeah. my hands for right. the week yeah. before we're hearing. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. And yeah. Is, is better. And don't uh, okay. yeah. March sixth is better. March sixth is better. Yeah. March sixth. March sixth. Okay. March sixth is it. Okay. So there's a motion to continue to March sixth. So I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, thank you, thank gentlemen you. and ladies. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I, I know there's a lot of people here for this hearing. They're probably going to pack up and leave, so I ask you to do so quickly. We still have uh, a significant thank amount of business to conduct tonight. Yeah. Yeah. the agenda, uh, yeah. but most likely March 6th and 7th. Yeah. 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 Good to see you. Haven't seen you in a long time. How are you doing? One meeting to another? What's going on? Never ends, huh? How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks. Day one. 
Regarding a change of use at 29 Mass Ave, the attorney are present, so please step forward, introduce yourselves, and we will open this hearing. Good evening. My name is Mary Winstanley O'Connor. I represent Arlington Health and Fitness. Um, good evening to all of you. This is David Vasconcellos. He is the uh, manager of the uh, health and fitness uh, facility, as well as one of the owners. And if, if you'd like, I can give you a little background of. Uh, this board approved a special, a comprehensive special permit for the site which houses a CVS, uh, used to be a blockbuster video, I think, um, uh, and it was at the back building, which was the auto repair shop of the old um, Alewife uh, Pontiac, uh, Arrow Pontiac, was a, supposed to be a children's entertainment facility. Um, that whole building was the children's entertainment facility. Mr. Marley, who owns this, this entire property, leased, uh, did a um, master lease for the back building with uh, two gentlemen, Murphy and McManus, and they sublet the back building to the children, children's entertainment center. That went bankrupt. That um, it was a place, you know, like a Chuck E. Cheese type setup. Uh, Murphy and McManus then subdivided that space and rented it to Mr. Vasconcellos for the, um, the Health and Fitness Center and Arlington Pediatrics. They have both been there for about 14 years, correct? 14 years in February. Um, what transpired is in connection with financing and an attorney doing some due diligence uh, for a zoning opinion, they learned that there was never um, a request to change the use um, of that property that the two tenants went in there, um, signed leases with Murphy and McManus, but there was no change of use for the facility. Um, I have nothing to do with Arlington Pediatrics. I'm only here with respect to uh, Mr. Vasconcellos' business. And his use um, is uh, permitted in a B4 with a special permit. Now, um, I've looked at the parking, and I've spoken with Laura Wiener about it. it is, it's the same component on the parking as the Children's Entertainment Center, one for every 300 square feet. Actually, the pediatric, I could just point out, the use of the other half of the building for the pediatric offices is actually a less intensive use because instead of it being one uh, for every 300 square feet, it's one parking space for every 500 square feet. There are 120 parking spaces on the entire site, and there is also bicycle parking there as well. So um, we're just looking to um, change the use. Uh, it might be a little late, but <laughs> uh, 14 years later, but. Mr. Vasconcellos had no idea that, that he needed to do that. Okay. Can I have questions? No, not really, no. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. I mean, it, make, it makes total sense. I, my only question is, uh, who, who is the appropriate party to be requesting the change of use? The, the, tenant the tenant is the, the appropriate party to request it because it's the tenant that's actually using it. It's not the landlord's responsibility to to change the use. It's the the onus is on the lessor to make sure that they're in compliance with all the zoning bylaws. Similar to how the prior hearing, uh, any retail use there, we have to come back depending on what kind of use. This is a permitted use, um, but the original special permit was granted didn't contemplate the use of a fitness center. Okay, so that's that makes sense. I, I don't have any question or issue with this. It's, it's a business that's been in place for 14 years. I don't want to make it harder for anyone else to do business in Arlington. Motion approved docket 2933. Any public comments, questions, <laughs> concerns? <laughs> Seeing none. <laughs> you never know. Okay. Proceed. I have a motion to approve docket 2933. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. That's a record. Sorry to be waiting for so long. Actually, okay. it was an experience for sure. What was going on? Yeah. No, I didn't want to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. Good night. No, I mean, we've actually circled that site quite a bit. We know quite a bit about it. But yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, with Monotony and Grill? Yeah. The um, hotel? It's, it's, yeah. Um, it's actually, it was perfect separately from Monotony. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you agree. So we, we know quite that a bit about it, and that's a fine idea. Okay. All right. Okay. It's a fitness center and a pediatrician's office. <coughs> it's a, yeah. It's because they're getting apple pie. <laughs> All right. Uh, town meeting warrant articles, update and schedule. Jenny. All right, thank you. Um, so in your packets, you have the warrant for annual town meeting and special town meeting um, for beginning on Monday, April 24th. And uh, you may have noted that warrant articles six through eight are the articles that have been filed by the redevelopment board. And then there are two additional zoning articles uh, that were filed by uh, 10 registered voters. So. Um, what I wanted to talk with you about tonight is the um, sort of the proposed schedule, which is also in your packet. Looks like this a little spreadsheet, um, and sort of the next steps with all of the warrant articles. Um, so I'm. This is a proposal. <laughs> Let's start there. My proposal is that we have our public hearing. As well, now we know we're having our March sixth meeting, meeting. So I'll add that back into the schedule. But. Um, the he public hearing would be proposed for March 13th. That is also the same evening that the Board of Selectmen will be hearing the warrant articles for the town bylaw changes, which are actually right after the zoning warrant ar article changes, uh, the, um, the bylaw amendments for residential construction, articles 11 through uh, 14. They're not happening at the same time, so the uh, proposal would be that the Board of Selectmen hears the, those bylaw articles um, before your meeting. So I think it would be 6 to 7.30, and then you would start your meeting at 7.30, and probably can, it, it, you'll hear the five articles that evening. Um, realizing that would be a very long night, but um, based on when we have to do notice, and also wanting to be able to wrap up the draft report to town meeting earlier than we do typically, which has been a, 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 a challenge in past town meetings. Um, my, this is why my suggestion is to start the public hearing on March 13th, especially in the event that you would need to continue anything or have any <coughs> additional um, meetings that would be needed, like the March 20th meeting, for example. Um, and as part of this process, as you know, we We'll have additional meetings with the residential study group. I talked about this probably at our last meeting. There's three upcoming meetings for the residential study group. One of them's on Wednesday, and the other one is on uh, next Thursday. And they'll be uh, working to finalize language for the um, article related to the uh, driveway, driveways and grades, um, and then would also be working on some of the town bylaw issues as well. Um, at the same time. So, so that's, I, I guess, maybe I'll just start there and see if you have any questions first before I go any further. Um, oh yeah, one of the other issues with the schedule was April, we had scheduled a meeting for April 20th, I believe, and that is actually, uh, April 10th, I'm sorry, that is Passover. So um, we would like to propose not having a meeting that night. So the last meeting before ten meeting would be April third, but if we needed to add a meeting, we'd have to be not on a Monday, I think. That's right. Yeah. It's, there's no other Monday. Pass over and then you've got Patriots Day. But depending on business, we could just we'll, we could plan to do how we've done in the past, where we meet an hour before town meeting as a board, and then adjourn and continue right. to town meeting, which is case, which is possible. Yeah. <laughs> but the report to town meeting, I'd like to have in by April eleventh. So okay. we have adequate time for town meeting members to review our report. And also um, proposing 
some outreach regarding uh, the public hearing and also a proposed public forum sometime in March or April so that we have adequate time for people to, you know, field questions and it would not be in just the public hearing setting kind of like what we did last year. So an informational setting, Something would that include the proposed town bylaws? Yes. Okay. Yes, it would. And this would just be for the, I think this would mostly focus on the residential construction. So the, the Limited to that. This is in what I'm proposing, but right. you can suggest otherwise. I, I know that we want to opine on the town bylaws and have some sort of recommendation, even though we don't vote on those and it's that's right. it's not us that's put those forward. Um, could we do those, I suppose we can't do those separately from the others because we're not voting <coughs> them per se, it's, it's part of the report to town meeting. But I know there was some discussion at the last meeting about some questions that wanted to be asked and some opinions from uh, the building inspector and, and other parties that right. would right. carry some weight toward our being able to, to recommend or suggest changes if needed. I think we could make recommendations to the Board of Selectmen about those uh, warrant articles, mm -hmm. and I think that you can discuss them as part of your report to town meeting, but you would not be voting on them. No. So we could discuss those in their current form sooner than a public hearing. It wouldn't be a public hearing. It doesn't have to be a public you don't, hearing. You're not going to, your public hearing is limited to the zoning article. Yeah. Which no, are, which no, no, no. I, I, what I'm trying to say is, is we can oh, you want to still we can about speed it. those up and talk about them and make getting our recommendation into the report easier on staff yes. if we have a discussion sooner rather than well we're trying to decide on the things that we actually are voting on and will be wordsmithing and getting into heavily. Okay. So uh, I, the, the six articles are ten. six through ten that yeah. you would need a hearing on. Yeah, six through eight are the ones that have been filed by the redevelopment board. And six, then six through ten. Yes. Yeah. Six through ten. Six yeah. through ten. So ten. six. Those are the ones we're gonna. Six those are seven, eight are our yeah. proposed changes. Nine and ten are zoning changes from right. ten registered voters that will. That need a hearing. And, and then, then the eleven, probably. twelve. The ones that look all the same to me. Yes. 13, Fourteen. Yes, the bylaw. Yeah. Those are we're opining on those, but not. They, those are those are the recommendations that we we danced around and began to discuss at the last meeting that right. involve uh, construction and, and some of the the good neighbor agreement that we've talked about in prior meetings. We decided that it was not within our purview to vote on those and put them into the warrant, but I think because they are ARB adjacent items, it's appropriate for us to at least discuss those in our report to town meeting and make a recommendation on those. I see. Because in a securitous way, they, they've come out of the residential study group, which is mm -hmm. the long way down the yep. org chart underneath us. Yeah, okay. so. But we won't actually propose those amendments. We won't propose no. them, we won't present them, but we'll make a recommendation okay. in our report. Okay. In that context, I kind of agree with you. You can get that discussion going, you're saying, Right. We right. And the reason we can get that discussion going sooner is because it doesn't have to be done in the context of a public hearing. So we take out the need to advertise. Right. And, and okay. Prepare. So I, I can put, you know, it could be the 27th, frankly. Why? February 27th, that is. To that discuss the bylaws. Yeah. To discuss the town bylaws. It actually does make sense to put it ahead anyway. Because it's yes, content. because the town yeah. council will need feedback also. Right. And we can, so we can give the town soon. council feedback and by holding it then. Yes. We'll have, have finalized, I suppose, our recommendation, which will go in front of the board selectmen for them to consider. And that will be at the conclusion of the three residential study group meetings, actually. Residential study group meets before you meet on the 27th. That's another, right. <laughs> another long, Good reason to clever do. evening <laughs> on my part. <laughs> well done. I'll be there. I'd like Both to of us. Of meetings. Just a, a procedural question. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I. I can't be here uh, at, at least at the beginning of the meeting on the 13th, uh, since that wasn't our, our original schedule, March 13th. Okay. Um, yeah, this is a new meeting. But uh, is, there, is there any reason that I uh, can't join the meeting in progress a little later in the evening? You can join the meeting, but voting late. would be an issue. But well, you're not voting till two more weeks later. Right, that's true. So you could watch it on Acme before. That's yeah. true. Right. Yeah, you have to familiarize yourself, and we've made that clear to 
the audience at the beginning of this subsequent meeting, but you'd be able to vote at that point. When's our fifth member joining us? Next week, next meeting. Um, he actually, I think so. He uh, is going through the appointment process right now through the Board of Selectmen and will be able to <coughs> vote at the February 27th meeting. Excellent. He'll be sitting with you at the next meeting, but not quite ready. Not, not yet <coughs> having been sworn in, cannot vote until February 27th. But that is our next meeting. That is our next meeting. Oh, the sorry. 23rd is a notice. I'm thinking tonight he's actually, tonight is when he's being appointed. <coughs> and then he has to get sworn in on the 27th, and then he can come here to well, the meeting. Yeah. So get a letter. I'm thinking about Mark. <coughs> come in he'll be ready to vote, but he'll be at the board, at the table, through all these March and April meetings. So there's enough form. He'll have five <coughs> Okay. So, but yes, that's a good point. March 13th is a new meeting. I had not <coughs> forgot that. So I was, because initially I was thinking we would take out March 6th and put in March 13th, but now we just decided to keep March 6th, and so you're adding March 13th as just, just an evening for public hearings. Okay. So it is not in your original <coughs> schedule. So you'd need to confirm that you can actually attend that evening. And this this three twenty seven is also being added, right? Because it's going to be <coughs> the twenty. Yeah, and, and typically what we've done, and Andy can correct me if I'm wrong, but what we do is we hold a public hearing, we deliberate, and then continue the hearing to mm -hmm. allow for public comment to come in via email and mm -hmm. other means, and we'll then take that into consideration, take any further questions or concerns, and vote at the subsequent meeting. Right. So we vote, we listen to comments from the public. Mm -hmm. We deliver. We close it. We, close it. we then <coughs> yeah. vote the next time. Yeah, and we always allow, after after that hearing happens, we always allow for additional time for people to speak their piece Even. outside of meeting, email lists or however. So. so just in effect, every Monday in March is a potential meeting. <laughs> now it's possible yes. that we won't need. 320, but we don't know that yet. Yeah, that's, uh, I guess that's a possibility. We could eliminate that. 120s. Well, we'll have to vote. Is that also a possibility? That's a 20th. So we can vote with four people if someone else. That's right. Yeah. But the, the 20th was on the original schedule. Yes. The 27th, the 27th is new. Yeah. So that's because also. Because that's when okay. you're also voting. That's, um, yeah, that's okay. like their next um, meeting. But adding things to schedule. To, the, to the Laura's point, because now every Monday in March is a meeting, you could eliminate the March 20th meeting, I suppose. That's a possibility. I think we can plan for it to... But you can wait. I think we, yeah, I think Figure we can plan out. for it to be off unless some... So the, the question is, will March 13th and March 27th work for everybody? Yes. That's everybody at the table. That's I will. Figure out the 13th, I, and well, we can... Borrow my day job, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I plan on being you, here. Yes. And, and okay. if something happens, it's good to know that there'll be a fifth member. Yeah. Yes. I will try to move things to the next part of the 13th. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I said it first, so you and can... The, and we can talk about okay. The 13th ones work closer. Yeah. All right. Director's report. Um, you've got the report here. I've... Uh, basically got a few just really quick updates. I think you may be aware of the Arts and Culture Action Plan. We've been calling it a cultural plan. Now it's an Arts and Culture Action Plan. This is the um, work that is being done by the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, MAPC, who is helping us with um, basically an, uh, looking at an asset inventory town-wide of cultural assets and helping us to then create an action agenda to uh, manage those assets and to also help the organizations that are charged with overseeing those assets to work together in coordination and um, you know really strengthen what we have in terms of arts and culture. It also relates in part to the cultural district planning that we are still doing and we still have a, a cultural district application being uh, reviewed by the Massachusetts Cultural Council um, and this is um, we're now in the phase where we are going to be 
doing more public engagement with the entire community. So um, ending the phase where we uh, had a survey, which I think I mentioned had a really extraordinary response, almost a thousand people responded to the online survey that had been posted through most of January. Um, and then we had a number of focus groups with the business community, with different arts interest groups, um, and other parties who are interested in arts and culture in town. Um, now we're into the public forum phase, so I wanted to get this on your also more meetings for your calendar. Um, the, f the first one is on March 1st. The second one will be on June 6th. Um, and they have different, um, you know, intentions. The first one is more like open house style, so you can learn more about the process, learn more about the results of the uh, survey, and uh, provide some feedback. And then the final one in June is really when we start to finalize the actual action plan. So, so is our official involvement required for this? No, it's unofficial. Okay. Is the Arlington Center of the Arts coordinating with this? Um, I'm actually, it's uh, our department with uh, the um, Arlington Commission on Arts and Culture. So they don't get involved? The, the ACA and many other arts organizations are also part of the process, but it's predominantly the department with um, the commission. <coughs> Okay, and then um, on the back page, just a quick update. Some of you attended the zoning recodification um, meeting, the, the all day meeting that we had, I mean, all board meeting rather, um, on January 28th. And if you hadn't attended, I just wanted to make sure that you saw the PowerPoint and then also the meeting notes that are provided also in the packet. Um, so that's, that's just a quick update on that. I think. Um, we are having our next zoning recodification working group meeting in a few March, March 1st. And that is when we are going to have the consultant come back and they will be reviewing with us the updated zoning audit. The zoning audit is what was the impetus of this entire recodification process. That's the one of the appendices of the master plan and it's being updated by the consultant right now. So that at the March 1st meeting, they're gonna be providing an update about that audit. So if you're interested, anybody's interested in attending, you're welcome to what is that? be there. March 1st um, at 8 a.m. And uh, on the first floor conference room here at Town Hall. I'll be there. Yes, <laughs> officially. Um, and then just quickly, a, a staffing update. Um, I think you know Corey Beckwith had left at the end of uh, last year, the calendar year, and we've been in the process of trying to hire a consulting um, conservation administrator. I, we're very close to hiring somebody and because it's kind of an interim thing through the end of the fiscal year, uh, with the hope that there would be a full-time environmental planner starting sometime in the next fiscal year, and contingent upon various reviews that need to take place of the department's budget. Okay. Um, and then there's another agenda item. So do you have any questions about my report, though? No. Okay. Sounds good. Great. Uh, Novus agenda. All right. So um, I have Novus agenda and emails. Um, two things here. Um, it's incredibly important to me, and I think to all of you, in many ways, you've shared this with me, different ways over the past year that I've been here, um, to uh, get us as a board uh, working in a more um, transparent environment so that we can see all of the application materials, all of the agendas and minutes in one clear place. The Board of Selectmen and the school committee um, currently use something called Novus Agenda. Um, if you subscribe to updates, then you know how it works. You know, you simply open up the agenda and then you click on an agenda item and it takes you directly to a set of materials that relate to that agenda item. Mm -hmm. And it's shared in advance of a meeting. The public can see it. Every, but, you know, there's access to materials and there's also a, an archive of materials that's online. We have not had the the ability to have this for the ARB and so I've been working with the IT staff and will continue to do so to get us to the point where we actually have this and um, maybe for some future meeting we can adopt a policy similar to the one that the Board of Selectmen and the school committees have adopted around 
bless you, bless you. how bless. you want to um, we can set specific timelines and deadlines for when we receive things so that maybe it's not happening so close to the meeting and you have adequate review time and also so that staff can have adequate review time for materials and the public um, and the press and the, and the media <coughs> as well <laughs> various people who wish to receive yeah. materials when they should receive them um, instead of just coming to our counter to request them which of course anybody can do at any time mm -hmm. um, or send an email but we are finding that that's less adequate especially as we get into more complicated projects people have a lot more questions so it's more and more important for us to provide those materials so um, this is like draft information for a future meeting. Yes, it says board selectmen, but we can update this so that it says ARB. And I have some suggested edits for that, but wanted to get this on your, just in front of you for now, and um, get, re get your reaction, I guess, to moving in this direction. And also, this would, I, I think, guess one more thing. This would move us away from uh, boards being presented. We would have I think there would be an expectation of PowerPoints, there would be an expectation of some more electronic materials being shared at meetings. Um, while we would not necessarily provide iPads or other devices for you to, you to use at the meetings, um, we do have access to them, so you could either bring, choose to bring your own or um, apparently there's a place where I can access devices should you need them. Um, and of course we can still have big plans, but I think that this would move us into the direction of, yeah. So you use a monitor or something like that? that you we have a projector. We have paper. <laughs> okay. There's a screen. screen. I think the screen was yours, wasn't it? Never mind. No, we do have a screen. No, I, I like this idea. I, I've talked to you about this before. I think it increases transparency. It increases ease for us to get through things. It, yeah. And it creates a better expectation of a proper timeline as to how things should be handled from start to finish. Right. So that we're not being handed packets of information before I bang the gavel. That's right. So. Um, in the interim, because it, this might take a few months to get online, um, we have been providing all of the documentation. But it's actually, there's now a new page that's related to ARB that says projects. So you can see all of the information related to 483 Summer Street, for example, in one place on the website that's related to the redevelopment board. Okay. In case you were wondering. And where that's good. That website. On the town's website. So if you notice. go to the redevelopment board um, page, yep. then on the sidebar it says projects, and you can see all the the three past projects that you've reviewed. All of the materials are now uploaded there. Are the applicants giving you the scans, or do you have to scan? Um, in many cases, we do get the scans. Yeah. So we we've been using them, or we have requested them when we when needed. But it is not part of the application requirements. So this would require us to change those. You know what's submitted. We can get there. We can talk about that. Yeah. yeah. Some other time. But I do think that's a discussion worth having. Okay. Probably in June. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> realistically. Yeah, realistically. Oh, so the projects are just list all just listed individually on the left here. Right. And then you can click on each one and you can get all the documents related to that project. All right. Great. Um, and so then just in I guess sort of in relation to this, um, everybody should now have their own email address through the town as part of, um, and I've shared this email. So we need to be using those email addresses. And if you have questions about how to access the town email system, like through webmail, I, I'm happy to answer those questions one-on-one -on -one with you about access. But it's all set up already, right? Everything's all set up. And everything is also set up so that people can now email you right now yeah. <laughs> well, through your town email account. We had to, well, I... I you should have provided, um, or you may have been asked to provide a password or something I like that. I think the town manager sent an email out to yeah, everyone to, to, to be the IT person. Yeah, I didn't do that. Do that. You that. did not do that. Okay, yeah. so you'll, so please... Please do, do that. that. And you can also, you know? when you, hmm? you, you can also tell her... Tell who? It, it's um, it's actually the email that I printed out for yeah. you. It's Sue Distler. Mm -hmm. yeah. She is the person to contact me. by phone or by email. Okay. To uh, she'll provide you with access to your account. Okay. And who contacts you on this email? 
Anyone. Anyone. Anybody. It's public. But you don't send out emails on that account. Well, you can. Um, you there are two do? ways to deal with it, is my understanding. And so you can, uh, you, you may choose to just use the webmail and log into it and do whatever, send and receive stuff there, but you have to go proactively log into the webmail account to check it. You can have it set up to forward emails to any address you want, and then you, you can either then log into webmail to respond, or they're saying we can, we <coughs> can respond from whatever address we forwarded it to directly if you want to expose that email address to the public and you CC your town email right. address so that it becomes a public record. Right. But you don't want to be sending out emails from individual ARB members. That should come from a, I don't understand. I guess it depends upon the matter that you're responding to. So depending upon if you did receive an individual email and you had a question about how to respond to it, I'm happy to help field that response. For, with you, or we can talk about it. But my understanding was that, for instance, communications from you to us will now come through they the will town come email. Through the town email. That's right. Yeah, it, it's really not any different than before. Okay. Our, there was some way of contacting us. I think only our phone numbers were on the website previously. I don't know. Or what addresses. Was the Maybe there was no email address. No, anything was. I think it's just my but email. Any time we've been emailed, they've emailed the entire group. So, mm -hmm. the entire board. So the shift is simply to start using the town email, but it is webmail. So if you're using your phone, you have to open up a browser. Unless you ask Sue how to set it up on your phone, depending upon what kind of phone you have, that's a little complicated. Um, or you can, um, I think that there's a way that you can download webmail onto your desktop. You can just open it up, and crawl or or open it up in your easy. browser. So it's pretty sure Check it once a day. That's right. That's it. So that's that's all I have. Okay. All right. And the minutes. Uh, yeah, minutes are not on our agenda this evening, but yeah, the minutes weren't on the agenda. That's right. Look at them. Got it in. Look at other business. Mike's last meeting? Yes. Okay, so we didn't say anything about our... Oh, you want to add a line in? The, the, yeah. The board commended yes. Mike Kerr for his service. Yeah. Commended and thanked Mr. Kerr for his years of service to the ARB. Yeah, uh, yeah that's it. to approve the minutes with that addition of the uh, commendation of my care. Second. Uh, the minutes of uh, January 23rd, 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Someone needs to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.